Hello and welcome to the Tampa Bay History Center and our Museum at Home program on Fort Brook. I am Ross Lamoureux, a historical interpreter here at the museum. Our first part that we spoke earlier on was the formation of Fort Brook, a United States Army installation on the south side of modern day Tampa. We will continue the discussion and more importantly its history from the Civil War in 1861 to the secession of the fort in 1883. First of all, Fort Brook was an installation designed by the United States Army to defend the mouth of the Hillsborough River at Tampa Bay. Today, that is where the Tampa Convention Center sits, all the way through where Amelie Arena, where the Lightning play, and even where we are at the Tampa Bay History Center. At one point, it was the largest military installation in North America. Its important earlier history was the fact that the headquarters for the Army was here during the second and third Seminole Wars, the second being the largest Indian removal war uh, that the United States fought in, lasting almost seven years from 1835 to 1842, with several thousand soldiers, sailors, militiamen from several states coming through Fort Brook. It anchored the Fort King Military Road, which was the major artery going north and south on the west coast of Florida territory. Fort Brook being the south, Fort King near present-day Ocala being the north. In the late 1850s and up to 1860, there was only a small caretaker force here at the post. But then in 1860, leading into 1861, activities throughout America began to ignite in what became the American Civil War from 1861 to 65. This is an overlay, Whiting Street here to the north, the Garrison Channel to the south, again showing all this territory being part of Fort Brook. By the American Civil War, the government, as I said earlier, was about to disband the post, but then the state troops of Florida, who sided with the Confederacy, took over the post by bringing a local militia company called the Sunny South Guards, commanded by Captain Leslie. They took over the post and began to drill and train and receive arms and equipment from the Confederate government. Throughout the Civil War, this was a Confederate post from 1861 to 1865, with one exception that we'll talk about later. During this time, several militia companies from around the state rotated in and out, some from the Tampa Bay area, some from as far north as Marion County, as these militia companies would come here, they would train, receive equipment, uniforms, and then join Confederate service, some joining other Florida regiments of the regular Confederate Army, such as the 4th Florida, 7th Florida, 2nd Florida, and 8th, and several other regiments. There were two occasions where Fort Brook played deeply into Civil War history. One was an excursion of the United States Navy landing a shore party here in 1863, and that leading into a land battle, the Battle of Ballast Point, and then another occasion in 1864 where troops came, invaded the town, and held Fort Brook and the town for several days. Going back to the first event, in October of 1863, the United States Navy, led by a local who knew the area, was brought here to retrieve or sink, hopefully, blockade runners that were owned by Captain James McKay, a civilian who worked with the Confederate government to export goods such as cotton and cattle to receive arms, equipment, and necessary items for both civilians and the military. He was quite successful, and the Navy wishing to stop this as part of their blockade of all ports of Florida. The blockade running on the east, all the way around Key West, and along the west coast. Tampa being one of the major ports where these ships, these fast steamers, were coming in and out. In October of 63, the United States Navy offloaded troops from two boats, the Adela and the Tahoma, where they rowed ashore at Ballast Point, walked around Fort Brook at night while the day before and during this time the two boats shelled the town as a diversion. These Navy troops in a landing party marched around the town, 
going clear of the fort and going north along the Hillsborough River to where today's Jean Street shipyard. They were able to sink two of three ships that were fully loaded with cotton getting ready to go out. One of them was able to escape along with Captain McKay, who were then able to warn the militia troops that were at Fort Brooke. As the Union troops were marching back towards Ballast Point to their boats, they were met and engaged by troops of the 2nd Florida, cavalry and militia, and a land battle occurred there, of which several dozen sailors were either wounded, captured, and one killed. Uh, this was the first armed encounter here that involved Fort Brook, and the second one being in May of 1864. There again, troops of the United States Army, particularly those of the U.S. Colored Troops, or black soldiers, marched into town and captured the fort and actually occupied the fort this time and the town, staying several days, and then as quick as they came in, abruptly left, basically as a show of force to show that at any point they could come in and take over the town and capture it. But the United States government, the federal government, realized by 1863 and early 1864 the importance of Tampa and Florida in general. They were providing cattle for food for the Confederacy. They were providing salt, which was a major preservative for food, with major salt works in the area where they would boil salt water. Fort Brooke was very important in, in a place of importance of defending these Confederate actions and that of the local civilian populace to feed not only themselves, but the Confederate Army. Florida became the largest producer of salt and one of the largest producers of beef and cattle for the Confederacy. By the end of the Civil War in 1865, the Union government took over what was then called, or what we today call Reconstruction. They sent troops to the major forts of Florida, particularly Fort Brooke, and watched over the town as agents of the federal government. By the late 1870s, Tampa once again has lost its importance to the military, so they began to uh, make plans to give back Fort Brooke to Tampa. And by 1883, had indeed given that over to Tampa, where docks, warehouses, and other businesses replaced that of the military. Fort Brooke, with its history going back to 1824, and lasting all the way to 1883 was a major part of Tampa history then and a predecessor to that military history that continues here in Tampa today with MacDill Air Force Base still here. I am Ross Lamro, historical interpreter here at the History Center. Thank you for tuning in. You can learn more about this and the History Center at tampabayhistorycenter.org.